But guys, this is the episode you guys have been waiting for. This is the finalizing of Colette's S15. We got a few more blanks to fill in. We got some cool updates for you guys. Enjoy. This is it! So we have a dyno day scheduled, so we are just doing a once over on everything. We put the boost leak tester on it, this little fella right here. We found our intake manifold gasket on the lower two runners actually had blown out. So because these things run pre-mixed oil and also with the E85, that lower portion of the runner collects a lot of residual fuel. So it basically soaked this to the point where this gasket material got soft and then when it got boosted in it, it blew out. So we were running a little bit less than our target boost pressure. We have 14 PSI spring and we were seeing like 11 pounds. We wanted to see where that was coming from and we found it. That answers that question. So now we got to find a better gasket than that and yeah, try to make it work. oil proof. Yeah. And the 85 proof because this ain't it. It's soaked. Yeah. You can't see it on film, but this is, whole thing is like moist. Yeah. And we got uh, the homies here doing our windshield for us. We got a front window, a back window, and the quarter windows all going back in. And we put the whole interior in the car. Oh yeah. That's as well it. as that. Uh, got back seats now. Back seats. Yeah, right. look at that. Nice and tight. We made it fit. I had a lot of stress doing this. I had to think about it for like four hours to figure out how to do it. I just need Donnie to bring his little plastic Wait. welder in there. Because in order to get it in through where the C pillars went, I actually had to cut out the little tubs on the inside of the door panel. Cash. Hmm. Found the centerpiece for the shifter with your cigarette lighter, which she wanted. So all that's left is glass. Glass and, and a passenger leak. seat, boost leak, and we need to put in different harnesses because she found some cool yellow ones that she really likes. So we're gonna change out the yellow and MFGs. If we find them, they're somewhere over either in her shop, Drift HQ shop, Adam's shop, or in the mail room or in uh, merch. Yeah, we should definitely just sneak the whole body kit on while she's gone. What do you guys think? Actually, you won't have time to answer, so we're just probably gonna do it. We built Adam's car when he wasn't watching, so we could finish building her car while she's out of town. It's only fair. Time lapse. To take the car to the dyno and finally get some numbers turn up the boost a little bit and see what she looks sounds and feels like um, we did a little bit of dct tuning on there as well most of the stuff's going to be covered on her channel but here's a little bit for you what we got what's up lee hi bit rotary tuner die now apparently she's converting all of us very slowly slowly yeah uh, Slowly, but no, you're you're already. I feel like a rotary die. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening in front of everyone's eyes. So they just ain't seen my car yet. But I just like to make planes. That's it. Lee's gonna be helping us out with the tune today, and then Chris and Cricket also have more updates. Oh, yeah. Every video, there's just oh, yeah. so many updates to do to the channel. Have, have you shown them the interior yet? I haven't. I really want this to be a drift street hybrid yeah. type of car and full drift interior. Car. Drift wheat car. Drift wheat car. Exactly. So no. the interior was super, super important to me, and Cricket did an absolutely incredible job fitting everything back there. We got back seats. We got back seats. You have to use these yet. Yeah, it's gonna be the first. Yeah, those are actually really premium. Easy. My car never moves. Okay, I don't want to jinx myself. Find yeah, wood somewhere, that's but not going anywhere. oh, it's not going anywhere. Happy you slap and say it's not going anywhere. Yeah, then it never does.
another fun and exciting update we got is we actually have the whole body kit on the car mounted and the fitment pretty much sorted out. It is still pretty slammed, but we love that. So we were busy. We didn't really have much time to get to the body kit. As excited as we were to be able to once to install it. Fortunately enough, the paint guys came over and handled it for us. They mounted up all of the extra add-ons on the arrow, as well as putting the fenders, hood, and body panels, doors, and everything on to make sure everything fit exactly the way they wanted to. So now we got some footage of that too. electrical clips and stuff like that. Bro, I've so, never owned a Nissan. What do you do? I don't know. That's why I'm making you do it. So if you break it, it's your fault. Like, <laughs> it looks like you squeeze these things and then pull, what right? you think, but try to squeeze the middle one. The middle one, these squeeze too. There's a middle one too? I think so. I don't, I don't know. Not. That's why we need Chris here. Donnie. Donnie, come unplug this. I clock in. Let's see if you can right. get it off. Yeah, so uh, disregard my mess over here. So um, Scardig came over and was courteous enough to set me up with, basically he had the whole pinout for the S15 cluster, which I could not find anywhere, but he has pretty much everything as chassis you could ever imagine, like memorized in the back of his brain. So what we have is we have our two connectors here. We're gonna use the outputs from the ECU that can actually be programmed so we can take the rotary RPM signal, convert it to the four cylinder tack signal to make the stock tack work. Same thing with the fuel level, coolant temperature and all that stuff. So I am now making the connector here that's going to plug into this and then there is a 12 pin output connector that is on that Haltech R3 and it lets you just program your outputs directly off of the ECU so I don't actually have to run any mechanical sensors on the engine which is going to be great for me because I don't want to run a bunch more wiring through the firewall. So we are going to put this together then I'm going to call Andrew from Haltech and Andrew is going to tell me exactly how to set up all of these outputs because I have no idea what I'm doing. I can wire it, just the programming part, not my forte. All right, so I have cracked the Haltech code. Thanks to Andrew, he um, helped set me up with all of the outputs and stuff from the wiring harness that he built for this R3. So now I actually have almost full functionality. There's one more output I have to adjust for vehicle speed, which is actually gonna take the output speed sensor from the DCT to make this function. So now when you key on, it also gives you this option to do the cool little tack sweep thing. It tells you you know that everything is working. And then when you start it, Right now you can see our gas gauge is working. Our temperature gauge obviously isn't registering because our engine is cold, but it's cold, so it doesn't want to stay idling, but you get the idea. Yeah, rotary stuff. So yeah, it's one of those things where even though the car is running, driving, tuned, all set up and together, 
it is still not 100% done. It's always that last little 5% of a build that takes the most amount of time. So all of the finish wiring, looming, cleaning stuff up, making everything like full functionality inside the car. So we're buttoning all that up for her and then uh, eventually the car will get all the exterior stuff finalized, touched up, wet sanded, polished. Dash is gonna get some more cleaning up. I actually got a few trim panels inside the car I gotta clean as well. And you know, yeah, all that spaghetti I got going on under there, I gotta hide, clean, make nice, but you know. Got to make sure it works before you clean it up. That's another important thing. Well, you're putting in the radio? Yeah, so this is my switch power for the radio. And it gets constant power from one of our um, studs coming off the circuit breaker. And then that's going to activate and then I have to run speaker wires and we have to figure out what speakers are actually going to fit between this and the roll cage. As you can see, Cricket trimmed this out nice so it clears the roll cage. And he also made Oh yeah, explain that, that Cricket guy. was making plastic and all that now. So initially the idea was to uh, make the lower portions out of ABS so we can just drill a hole in it and mount the speaker. But the ABS just didn't look good, especially with the finish of the rest of the interior. It doesn't really match the plastic portion of it, so decided to make it out of aluminum. So we also get that bead roll in there. It gives us a little bit more you know, creativity and fun with it. And also gives us more spots that we can potentially mount the speaker. Let's see how that goes. We have to support the bottom of this door panel as well, because when you grab it right now, the panel cut in half. Still got a lot of wiggle to it, so we'll be back. Poor Craig. Chris is smiling. It works. <laughs> no, we got a commercial. Perfect. commercial. That's copyright right for Hopefully. All right. So relaying back to what we talked about before, how builds are never really all the way done. We were picking away at little details on this car now. So all the stock functionality of all the switches now, wipers, headlights, all that stuff is programmed to actually run off the PDM still. So we got all the extra protection of the PDM, but still get to keep kind of the stock feel. Same thing with the gauge cluster, RPM works. Uh, fuel works, coolant temp works, speedo, that's going to be a bar tech thing to figure out how to take the output speed from the DCT to actually make it register onto the display. That's above my pay grade. And we got um, a radio. There's only two rear speakers because we got to find ones that are actually going to clear our roll cage down there. But aside from that, I mean, it needs a passenger seat and then some drive time. This thing needs to get out there and do some stuff. Well, that pretty much wraps up our side of it. You saw a lot of the more in-depth stuff on Kles channel, and uh, we'll relay a little bit of the dyno information and dyno videos and stuff like that in here as well. Wish Cricket the best, because he's home and he's sick and he's dying a little bit inside, because he's not here to get to see all this happen, but we also need him to finish some stuff over here. So, wish him health, happiness, all that good stuff. And what was the other thing? Oh, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for the 100K. Oh yeah, thanks for the 100K. We made it, boys. Like, comment, subscribe. No.